Good evening, how you doing? My name is Mr. Peyton Moore of 66 Books of Truth Ministries and also an instructor of the Maximized Manhood uh, Men Study. I hope you all are having a great day, men. I hope that you all are enjoying yourselves and that God is blessing you because right now what we need is strong men in these tough times. This is where we are, strong men in tough times by Ed Cole. We're going to continue our study. We're still on chapter four. We're going to be talking about today the seventh sense. The seventh sense. We do know a five, and the five are taste, smell, feel, sight, and hearing. Taste, smell, feel, sight, and hearing. That is what God has given us. That's what he has blessed us with. But there are two more we're going to talk about today. It goes on to say, it goes say, he believed in creation. Man was given five physical senses plus a sixth sense, which is mentality. Mentality. Mankind's mentality must have been extremely powerful because Adam was able to name everything that God had created on this earth. The mental gift became blighted, blinded by sin, and as a result, much of its power has been lost. Okay? Do we understand that? Okay, let's carry on. In his personal uh, conviction that we also are given a sixth sense, which is called sense in the spirit, sense in the spirit, okay, above and more powerful than the other six senses, it's an ability to receive God's spirit and develop his characteristics to some extent, to be able to think God's thoughts, feel God's feelings, say God's word, and work God's work. Now, in the Bible, it says that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and that is true. So what we're trying to do is study his word, have a relationship with him, have faith and trust in him, believe in him, and just work toward perfection, man. We're not going to be perfect, but we can be strong men in these tough times. This was part of original creation, but was also lost through sin. It was lost through sin, but it was restored through Jesus Christ. The spiritual awareness is the source of power in believers' lives today. Okay? Ed Cole say he lived in North California, and he met this man by the name of Charles, a very intelligent man. He was a developer in, in, in building buildings, so he had got this contract to build a shopping center mall. And one day he was going to his office early that morning where the construction was about to start, and while the plans... And while he was getting his plans and all his instruments together, something just touched him. Something just came over him to say something is wrong. The Holy Spirit came over him and got into his mind and gave him that quivering nerve in his stomach to say something is wrong about the way that they surveyed the property. Come to find out the property was two feet off the mark. So... Before that, what happened, he, he, he responded to the Holy Spirit. He kneeled to the chair in his desk as he got to his office, and he prayed. And the Holy Spirit just touched him and said, there's something wrong. He kept nagging him. And suddenly this picture that, that came upon him said, hmm, well, that surveyor went out there. They were two feet off. Okay? So we got to change that because for some reason, uh, this marker was off. And come to find out, it was too close to the building. Okay? But what he didn't realize is that he had already done this before he got ready to get paid. Once the, all the construction was finished, what he didn't realize is that he did check this. And with his other colleagues, they did correct it. Because when the inspections, inspectors came out, they did measure everything and everything was perfect. But there was a meeting before everything was complete. And he forgot to mention it in the meeting what had happened. So what he done, he called everybody into the office and they, they was just kind of like going through the meeting, but he forgot to talk about it. But it hit him again. And he realized that, oh, I forgot to tell him this. Okay. So in route, he remembered the survey had been taken. So he went back to get his papers in the meeting and showed what had happened. All the work was completely completed properly, okay? He received his final payment because at first he wasn't 
He didn't think that he was going to get paid, but he did because everything was already done. He had forgotten to mention that everything was corrected. Charles had received direction in that seven sense in his spirit, given by the indwelling spirit of God. He was being led by the spirit to make sure and go back and say, wait a minute, let's double check something. The Holy Spirit comes to us to say, look, I don't want you to make a mistake. I don't want you to lose out. Double check this. And you'll probably find out that there was a mistake. So by time, it's giving you time to get it corrected so you can receive that final payment, that final gift at the end of the job. Okay? Spiritual strength gives authority over the downward pull toward things earthly and merely human. Man was created from dust of the earth, created from the clay of the earth. Okay, so we're used to dirt. We used to being dirty. We were created in the wilderness. Okay, as a and we are a stem of it. Okay, our idioms of speech regarding moral and unlawful things as earthy or dirty. We are referred to vocal jokes as being dirty. Sin gave man a downward direction. Sin gave man a downward direction. When we fall into sin, it seems like we always spiral downward. We fall into sin. We stoop to something low. God didn't design us to stoop to something low. God designed us to be on top at highest standards, okay? We should be reaching upward and staying away from sin. Separate yourself from sin. Unethical practices are beneath us, men. We can hit rock bottom if you do not separate yourself from sin. Okay? The earthiness is natural to man unless something draws him upward, away from such base element. And the way we do this is have a relationship with God, study his word, believe in him, trust in him, give him your life so you can be a strong man in these tough times. Okay? Long after Adam's sin, we read Apostle Paul list these works of flesh. Okay? So you can find those in Galatians 19.26 and I'll read a few of them off to you. Here we go. Galatians 5, 19 through 26, if I'm being to be correct. Okay, you can fall into adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish uh, ambition, uh, dissensions, hearsays, envy, murder, drunkenness, and so forth and so on. You all have to read this that is found in Galatians 5, 19 through 26. Understand those works of flesh. Okay? In the absence of God in our lives, when we take God out of our lives, when we remove him out of our lives, when we separate ourselves from him, we are naturally dragged down toward these beggarly elements. But when Christ made it possible for us to receive the Holy Spirit of God again to become a reborn be a re born Christian again to let God come into your life and save you uh, as you repent and confess your sins to God and ask for forgiveness. We also receive his resurrection power in our spirits, enabling us to live above or have power over the lust of the flesh. We must have power over this lust of the flesh. God gave us the power and authority to do so. Okay? A new creature in Christ Jesus has power that the unreformed can't imagine. The unbelievers are trying to figure out what's, what's going on with them. They have all this power. What's going on? Is this evil stuff? No, it's great stuff. Because I am a new creature in Christ. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't hang out in the places I used to hang out at. I don't fool with the drugs and alcohol and gambling and, and strip clubs and prostitutes and getting indulged in a lot of sinful things anymore. So I have power over those fleshly, lusty things. Okay? Because I have God in my life. To have a mind of Christ, to be Christ-like, and to be led by the Holy Spirit of God, it, it is to be able to think 
act and to be motivated by the sixth sense. Okay, it's supernatural. It's also, it's also why unbelievers are so frustrated with Christians because guess what? Believers live on a higher plane. We live on a higher level than the unbelievers, my friend. This is why you got to be a strong man in these tough times, my brother. Living there takes work of faith and the discipline of the mind and body, but that's a small price to pay for such high life. So, Jim, I hope you understand this. The sixth sense, mentality and the spirit. Mentality is six and the spirit is number seven. This is something that you must have. This is something that you must uh, adapt to, to in order to be a strong man in these tough times. So now we're going to go on to what we talk about here is the secret of fasting. The secret of fasting this is something that we must do. And Jesus said these things. He said, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. We must pray and we must fast. Meaning that we need to be alive in the spirit realm as the living soul. We must be alive in the spiritual realm. You got, to, you got to do this. You got to fast and pray. By walking in the Spirit, we are enabled to have a strength flowing from God. Okay? To think, feel, and to do what God desires to exercise His authority on earth. Okay? Okay. Now, fasting and praying. Man, we can have the power and strength that God, He wants to give us this, and we can think like him to a certain extent. We can feel good. We can act on it because this is what God desires. Praying and fasting go together just like a rod and a reel. Praying and fasting go together like male and female, man and woman, husband and wife. That's what God created. And we're not changing that. God is not going to never let it be changed. So you might as well get, get, get that out your mind. Okay, I just want to be real with you, bro. I'm just coming natural. I'm just coming raw with you. Okay? To fast from food is symbolic. To fast from food is symbolic of severing oneself from earthly things. Okay? Sometimes you need to take a break. Okay? You take a break from all that pork and, and beef and all that stuff. Hey, sometimes you got to do like Daniel. That 21 day fast, hit vegetables, lots of water, take care of yourself, fruit, exercise. You know, you gotta take a break. There are a lot of things you gotta take a break from. Not only food wise, but mentally, okay? In fasting, we cut off the supply from the earthly to the physical, okay? At the same time, we increase the spiritual supply to the heart and mind, bringing the physical into subjection to the spiritual way. This is the primary purpose and result of fasting, okay? So, not only food, you need to separate yourself from a lot of things like uh, uh, television, newspapers, telephone, uh, the internet, Facebook, Twittering, and, and all this craziness that's going on in the news. And, and you just got to separate yourself and get more into God's word because it goes on to say these things keep us from the un keep us unbiblically attached. It keep us away from the Bible. It keep us unbiblically attached to God's word. When you fast from the earthy and at the same time you devote yourself to read the word of God and pray, you allow the spirit to energize your spirit and bring your soul and body under subjection, under, under subjection, so that the presence of God increase in your life. You want the presence of God to increase in your life. You have to put away all those things and get more into God's word. Get the relationship with God. Pray to God and let him come into your heart, men. In order to be leaders in your home. In order to be leaders in your community. In order to be leaders on your job and in your church. And even in the schools. 
okay? Fasting is a such basic principle that even when done naturally, it initiates great strength of spirit. Gandhi even knew that. Gandhi knew this secret. The strength derives from fasting gave him power over men and nations. The strength gave him power. That when he fasted, it gave him power over men and nations, and he even knew that. Okay? So, you know, even some, some celebrities have given their life to God. Some of them believed in God. Some journalists, they have given their life to God. Some of them believe in God. And they realize that when they fast, man, they can feel a source of healing come over them, a change of, of the way they separate themselves from the evenness of everything that's going on in this world. It's a big difference, okay? Now, we must follow these patterns that God has for us. By applying, when you apply yourself to these principles of the Bible concerning both, you'll find healing and a new life through fasting and praying, okay? All right. Everything God does is according to a pattern and based on a principle of his kingdom, not Satan's kingdom. God gave a pattern for his tabernacle to Moses and his temple to date to King David and for the church of Apostle Paul. OK, Daniel prophecy prophecies were all undergirded by a divine pattern. When men find God's pattern for their lives and base their faith on the principles of his word, they become successful in all they do. When you follow God's pattern, you become successful in all that you do. The patterns for my fast, as Ed Cole says, was to take his breakfast and his lunch and his dinner hours to reading the Bible. So, men... In the morning, and that goes for me too, because sometimes I get lazy. Let's make that extra hour to get up in the morning to study God's word and pray. Or in the midday, if you can't fit it in then, like I do sometime, three o'clock is my time. Between three and four is for me to spend time with God. At night before I go to bed, if I missed out, I'm going to spend 30 minutes to an hour in God's word. Okay? We got to get back on track, men. Okay? <clears throat> you got to start praying and fasting. You got to get back to doing this. Okay? This is how to fast before you begin anything. Study how to fast before beginning. Okay? Many men are willing to allow things to drag on day in and day out. Things like financial crisis, marital crisis, problems, working with the kids, the cause, the friends, your surroundings. But you know what? Without disciplining yourself to get the mind or situation under control, fasting is an obvious way to accomplish this. Fasting is an obvious way to accomplish this, man. So fasting and praying plays a major key in you accomplishing and getting over a lot of things and hurdles in your life. So, these are things that you must do, so let's do it. I hope you all enjoyed this message. I hope you all share it. We're going to complete chapter 4, and I want you to understand that God loves you, and may God bless you, because we need strong men in these tough times.